Thank you for coming. A concept about God that is not completely new to the New Testament, but a name for God that is used in the New Testament so primarily and was mostly missed by the people of the Old Testament is the idea of Father. See, when we look at the names of God, they tell us something about who God is. He reveals himself to us by his names. Sure, he does in so many other ways too, but a name is such an intimate way of knowing somebody. It's amazing. You'll hear people laugh and say, well, you know, you kissed that person. You know, who was it? What was their name? Ooh. I'm not sure. I didn't catch their name. <laughs> and people will laugh. They'll be like, you don't even know the person's name? You know, this kind of idea of, wow, you, you, you don't know their name. You can't be that close to them. How could you act like you are? See, God doesn't want us to think that we aren't close to him. He wants us to know his name, his character, who he is. In fact, we are called often by the name of God ourselves. In the New Testament, we look at this idea of Father. And Jesus keeps teaching us that we should look at God as our Father, which gives us a whole different revelation of who Jesus is trying to tell us that God is. It's very personal. It's very close. Not only tells us something about God, if God is our Father, it tells us something about us. See, we know that He's our Father, that we're His children, that we were created in His image and in His likeness, but we so often miss the personal closeness of that. And in Christ, not only are we physically made in His image and likeness, but also spiritually, He becomes our Father. So today, we're going to be looking at a few scriptures, seeing what it teaches us about God being our Father, and the closeness of that relationship, and what we can learn from that. Heavenly Father, may we learn from your word what it means to be your children and to have you as our Father. In the name of your only begotten Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. There are some very famous passages about God being Father. One of them is Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. When Jesus is teaching them how to pray, he goes, Pray then like this, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He tells them when they're praying to remember they're talking to their Father. And he goes on in the same passage, in the same sermon, when we skip down to chapter 7 and verse 11, it says, if you, then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? That God, because he's our Father, gives us good things. He doesn't give us bad things. He says, you know, if, if your kids ask for a fish, will you, will you just give them a rock? And say, here, eat, eat this. No, you'll, you'll take care of them. You'll bless them. If they ask for bread, are you just going to give them a serpent and say, well, isn't this as good? <laughs> no. You know, I mean, it, you know how to take care of your kids. Well, your father knows how to take care of his children, too. And then one of the big passages that talks about God being our father is in Hebrews. It's chapter 12, verses 5 through 11. And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are illegitimate children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our own good, that we may share in his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant but later it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. We live in a day and age where discipline is uh, a bad word. I've watched sports where they throw the guy out at first, and all the little kids are taught, oh, no, we're not trying to get each other out. It's good that you did that. But he's just going to stay on the base. 
because we don't want to hurt his feelings. Kids that run wild and rampant, screaming and yelling even at their parents, they say, one, two, don't let me get to three. Why? Well, right, what will you do? You're not going to do anything. Discipline is gone. Teachers in the classroom can't do anything anymore because, well, their parents don't, so why should the teacher get the right to? But see, God's not this way. He says, I am a loving father, and I will train you by discipline. And even back when most dads were that way, the Christians were saying, why would God put me through this? And what the writer of Hebrews is saying is, well, because it yields a pre peaceable fruit of righteousness once you've been trained by it. Because he's your father. It says, you know, your dad's down here did the best they could. But God always does it for your good. He knows exactly what's good for you. And he will discipline you only for your good. It's not for him. Why? Because he's a father who loves you. God will give you what you need. And sometimes that's that piece of bread. Sometimes that's that fish. Sometimes as our shepherd, as our father, he will provide everything that we need. But sometimes as our shepherd or as our father, he will also have to discipline us and correct us. He'll have to take that rod and walk us over the head or across the backside and say, enough of that, you know that. Why? So that once we are trained by discipline, we are a person that we didn't think we could become, but that God knew and saw in us all along. And he's pushing us to become that. He's driving us there so that when we get there, we are exactly what he made us to be. God loves you so much that he was willing to die for you. God loves you so much that he's not willing to let you stay steeped in the problems and issues and hurt that you have unless you're just hell-bent to ignore him and to say, I'm not going to listen, and I will not be trained by discipline, and I will only rebel and run away from you, God. We've all met many people who have decided that with God, just as we've met many people who have decided that with their own parents, who have just decided, I will not be guided, I will not be disciplined, I will not learn from their love and from their correction, I will leave. Just as we've seen that down here and the disastrous results that normally occur from that, anyone that does this with their loving Heavenly Father will be left adrift. But each of us that know God and have accepted Him as our Father spiritually know that He is training us. Jesus put it this way in John 15, that when we remain in Jesus the vine, the Father, God, who is the gardener, will prune us so that we can bear even more fruit. This pruning sometimes hurts. This pruning sometimes is hard. But God is doing it for His glory and for our good so that we can accomplish even more in this life and in the life to come. So when you think of God as your Father, know that even if you had a bad Father down here, and when you think Father, you think abuser. When you think Father, you think abandoned. When you think Father, you think somebody that is terrible. This is not that kind of Father. If that's the Father you knew, this is the Father you were looking for. If that's the Father that you grew up with, this is the Father who won't do that to you. If you had a Father who only cared about himself, this is a Father who was willing to lay down his life for his children. And he becomes a father to the fatherless. And when your heart is broken, and when you're hurting, and when you think, I just can't make it anymore, know that this God is your father. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He even owns the hills. He'll provide for you. He'll watch out for you. He'll protect you. He'll love you. And you will have a relationship that will never end and will never abuse you, but only love you. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Our closing song reminds us that God is our Father. It's the Lord's Prayer. See you tomorrow.
your mercy and we need your grace today yes we do hear us as we pray Rises to heaven. 